What's going on, everybody? So I was actually on a mini vacation. If you were wondering why I wasn't responding or reacting to the news about ROG Ally X, it was just because I was having a good time and minding my own business. And for some period of time, I like to stay away from social media. But I have heard about the news about ASUS's new handheld or the newest version of the ROG Ally, which is called ROG Ally X. And of course, the X stands for extra battery, extra RAM. RAM, but not extra resolution. It has the same exact amount of resolution that the original RG Ally had, which is 1080p with 120 hertz. And of course that sweet VRR. But the most important additive to this handheld is the additional 16 gigabytes of RAM. And to me, that's a huge deal because the integrated graphics inside of the Z1 Extreme chip uses some of that RAM inside of the RG Ally. So having 32 gigabytes is going to alleviate some of that stress with the RAM and the constant messages popping up like, you don't have enough VRAM or you don't have enough RAM. Now you're always going to have enough RAM and VRAM with the RG Ally X. But of course, one of the most important additions that is coming to the RG Ally X, and the main reason why it took me so long to talk about it in internet years, is mainly the fact that the RG Ally X hasn't been officially announced. It's just been talked about by ASUS, hinting at some of the features that are going to be added, but there aren't really specific features besides the RAM that have been mentioned in great detail. So a lot of what I'm saying is just conjecture and it's not really based on actual fact. But ASUS has confirmed that they are going to increase the capacity of the ROG Ally's battery with the X model. And I kind of find it funny that they're calling it ROG Ally X, similar to how Microsoft calls the Xbox Series, Xbox Series S and X. So with those minuscule details, you can actually tell that Microsoft had some kind of influence with the ROG Ally in the first place, since free Xbox Game Pass subscriptions were included with the original ROG Ally. I'm not sure if they are going to do something similar. Hopefully they do something like if we're paying more, and I'm assuming the price is going to be around $800. $800 is a sweet spot, it's $100 more, but with the extra RAM and battery, I think $750 to $800 is fair, but most likely they're just going to have it at either $700 or $750 realistically since ASUS decreased the price of the original ROG Ally models. But yes, the ROG Ally X is going to have a larger capacity battery, and I'm assuming it's at least going to be two times the capacity of the original ROG Ally's battery. I believe that the X in the title means a lot more than we think. Since there is going to be two times the amount of RAM, which would make me think that ROG Ally 2 would be a more appropriate name, but we don't know for sure if there's going to be 32 gigabytes of RAM. All of those details are going to be unveiled on June 2nd, but a lot of people can assume that the most you can fit in a handheld that small is 32 gigabytes. Well, ASUS never ceases to surprise anybody with the amount of hardware that can fit inside of a small enclosure. I'm assuming they're either going to have 32 gigs or possibly more, but with the battery, most likely it's going to be two times max the amount of battery capacity the original RG Ally had, which is a whopping 80 watt hour battery. And that is a whole lot more than the Steam Deck OLED. But in that article I read and a lot of other people read, ASUS mentioned that they're going to have a lot more capacity in terms of battery. And if the X is any kind of factor with the ROG Ally X, then I hope that it's at least going to have double the amount of battery because if it has say a 53 watt hour battery, that's going to make some kind of dent, but it wouldn't be enough to get someone like me to buy a new ROG Ally model. But for most people, two times more would be more than enough because you would have games running at turbo mode for two times the amount of time. So that's about like an hour and 45 minutes to two hours in turbo mode, which is two times the amount of power that a Steam Deck had with the same exact amount of battery that the original Steam Deck had inside of it. So as I said before, we didn't get official details. And of course, there is new rumors spreading and coming out every single day, but I'm just going to wait for the official 
announcement and then I'll make a real video about this. But for now, I'm very excited to see exactly what ASUS has in store for the ROG Ally X. But in terms of what I think they're going to change in a massive way is, of course, the battery life, the RAM. And it also seems like they're switching the placement of the micro SD card slot, which a lot of people were asking for. But I like how in the article they sort of mention it in passing. They say, oh, by the way, we're going to change the micro SD slot in case you're wondering. And it seemed to be the very last thing that Asus mentioned, which is kind of crazy because that's sort of the biggest thing people were asking for in terms of changes for the next ROG Ally model or revision. But it seems like the ROG Ally X isn't the ROG Ally 2. It's just its successor and revision, just like how the Nintendo Switch and the Steam Deck had OLED versions, which kind of changed the placement of certain things and increased certain hardware specs. It seems like the ROG Ally X is doing exactly the same thing, but hopefully they're doing it in a much grander way and a way that fixes a lot of the mistakes that they made with the ROG Ally original. But in terms of the warranty issue, I think there are a lot of companies out there with a lot of crappy warranty policies. I think a lot of companies have a lot of fixing to do with their warranty, but it seems like ASUS responded to that by saying they're going to look at all of those issues with their warranties in a critical way and they're going to try to fix it as best as they can, which is what most companies can do. I think there were a lot of inner workings with ASUS and a lot of people in ASUS have very quote unquote creative differences. So there is a lot of back and forth when it comes to that company. It is very unfortunate that we have to deal with something like this when ROG Ally models are breaking left and right. Of course, at first with the micro SD cards. So you send it back and then ASUS passive aggressively tells you that there's a chip in something indicating that you actually opened it when in fact you have to send the ROG Ally model back to them without the SSD inside. Even though they tell you not to open it, they still require you to open it before sending it back for repair and keeping the ROG Ally models for a ransom of $200 or they're going to send it back broken to you is pretty much just ASUS kidnapping your ROG Ally. And I think that is completely wrong. I still think the ROG Ally is an incredible piece of hardware and I'm playing Ghost of Tsushima on it right now. And I think this handheld is absolutely amazing. It is unfortunate that a company like ASUS just keeps backpedaling with every kind of success that they have they seem to create their own failures as well and if a lot of people want to boycott the ROG Ally I don't blame you but to me personally my handheld is still working flawlessly almost because of Windows and I really just have no complaints overall but yeah let me know what you guys think about the warranty and also the ROG Ally X news are you hyped about the ROG Ally X or are you just going to hold off to see reviews like a lot of people did with the ROG Ally original? But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one. Later.